Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this course on the territorialization of sustainable development goals. This module um, is designed by Shakti Janture, your course director, and I'm Aminata Tulifal. I'm your course tutor, and I really look forward to interacting with you um, over the next five weeks. Um, so this first module is on the territorialization of sustainable development goals, but more specifically on the transition from Millennium Development Goals to Sustainable Development Goals. So we go through the history of Sustainable Development Goals and also um, the reason behind the territorialization approach. I um, take this opportunity to thank again IDEP for this great initiative and um, look forward to engaging um, on the next couple slides. So just to give you an overview of the content of the module, um, it is divided in six chapters. The first chapter um, looks at the assessment of the implementation of the Millennium Development Goals and also um, delves into the paradigm, paradigm shift. Um, the chapter two um, looks into the sustainable development goals and the notion of territorialization. So looking at the principles, the issues and the relevance of the topic. Chapter three will um, dig deeper into the approaches, the good practices for integrating and also adapting the sustainable development goals to national and local contexts. In chapter four, we'll be looking at the institutional monitoring mechanisms at the local level. Chapter five, uh, we'll dig deeper into resource mobilization and the financing of the strategy. The final chapter, we'll look at the challenges and impacts of COVID, but also discuss the prospects for local voluntary reviews. So chapter one um, is the balance sheet of the bet in artwork. Um, so Millennium Development Goals and the Change of Paradigm. The goals of the session are three main goals. So the first one is to allow the participants to understand the origin of the sustainable development goals. So looking at the transition from MDGs to SDGs, but also um, shed light onto the differences and similarities between Millennium Development Goals and Sustainable Development Goals. Finally, we'll look at the implications in terms of evaluation. So Millennium Development Goals. At the start of the Millennium in 2000, world leaders gathered at the United Nations Assembly to agree on the vision of combating poverty in all its forms. In light of all the poverty in the world, the inequalities and the different issues faced by different groups of people, not only in terms of social development, but also in terms of economic performance, world leaders agreed that it would be time to look at the development agenda and review the different achievements. Um, the vision that materialized into the Millennium Development Goals was composed of eight objectives, 18 targets, and 48 indicators. And this commitment to a new world served as a framework to mobilize the international community and to guide also development cooperation for 15 years. So now I would like to ask you to share your experiences um, about Millennium Development Goals. So I assume you know about the Millennium Development Goals, but please feel free to share um, any story you have about Millennium Development Goals. Um, let us know if you've participated in their implementation in your different countries, but also um, please share what is in your opinion, the different strengths and weaknesses of the Millennium Development Goals. So when the ass assessment time came for Millennium Development Goals, there was noticeable progress, of course, but there were also a lot of mixed results. First, in terms of increased aid um, to find into social sectors of poor and least developed countries, there was a lot of pressure on industrialized nations to, um, to, to provide aid to the least developed countries. And this aid was um, met with a lot of controversy in um, academic and policy circles. But one of the examples of the high pressure on industrialized nations is the 0.7 GDP. Uh, percent GDP that was uh, liberated at, uh, at the name of development aid. But the main um, critic criticism that was uh, highly shared by a lot of people in the academic and policy circles was that there was a lot of emphasis on the social sectors um, in developed, least developed countries, but not so much on the economic performances and all the different mechanisms put in place for more economic developments. And however, um, the most significant performances were recorded in East Asia and Latin America, which based their development model on the creation of productive jobs, the mobilization of tax revenues, and the financing of social protection systems. So 
So in light of all this uh, criticism, there were a lot of lessons learned, uh, but mainly the need for a paradigm shift, not only to treat social symptoms, but to create economic levers. Also, there was a lot of conversation on the efficiency of aid. Um, and many people argued that there was a lot of ways to which um, the countries could boost the economic performance, which could um, then trickle down to more social inclusion of more categories of populations. Uh, among which those mechanisms, um, direct investment, um, migrants, remittances, and other um, sources of revenue. But also in terms of um, promotion of sustainable production and consumption patterns, the emphasis was also put on the conservation of biodiversity and the transition to a low carbon economy as environmental stakes were high and people started to realize the need for a safer environment. Therefore, the 2030 agenda applies not only to rich countries, but also to so-called poor countries. Um, indeed, there was a lot of um, controversy on why this emphasis was put on so-called poor countries, even though rich countries and the most industrialized nations also face a lot of issues related to the growing poverty and the growing inequalities. So um, the following documents have been uh, put on the platform um, for more reading, further reading. Um, the first is the video that we watched earlier, so the transition to the sustainable development goals. And then two readings. Um, the first one is on the integrated and coherent approach to sustainable development in Africa on the agenda 2063 of the African Union. And the last one is the mixed results of the Millennium Goals by Arnaud Zachary. Please feel free to reach out to us should you have any questions and um, looking forward to exchanging on the next session. Thank you.